I just have a really simple example for copy constructors. There's really not much to them. They just allow you to copy data from one thing to another. And it's already implicitly done by C++, but you can make something more explicit. So I'm going to start off. I have a employee class and I'm going to add three types of constructors. And you can overload your constructors so you can have as many as you want with different amounts of parameters. So this one is the default constructor. I can make one that is like my setup function down here, a parameterized constructor. Maybe we'll label this up on top. And then we'll have a copy constructor. This one will take a reference to a different employee. So over here, we can implement these. There is something I want to show before implementing this copy constructor, though. So let me just copy all of this over. And the number one thing here is I have a pointer manager, so I need to at least make sure that is set to null pointer when it's started. I'm going to comment out the copy constructor for a moment. Oop. That's supposed to be singular. So what we have at the moment in the program is uh, we're creating a boss employee and an underling employee and then a third one here. At the moment it's not gonna do anything, it's just gonna call the empty constructor. This one is just going to call an empty constructor and then call setup, but we could make that parameterized by basically just doing this. Though at the moment that's not implemented. I'll go implement it in a moment. And then this is also just using that setup function. So if I run this, I get a seg fault because uh, this one didn't initialize the pointer to null pointer. So we will go ahead and call setup here. Our parameterized constructor just takes the same parameters and then passes them to the setup function so I don't have to rewrite that same functionality again. So that will work. And then the last one didn't get set up with anything, so it just is all blank. Now I can use a constructor here and pass an underling1 as a parameter or as an argument to underling2's constructor. And C++ has implicit constructors. If you don't define any constructors, it's going to have a default constructor that's just empty. Um, if you don't specify a copy constructor, it will also make one for you, but you just can't see it. So in this case, it basically copies over everything from the other employee. It's just gonna copy what it can, and that's the end of it. And sometimes that's fine. But in this case, let's say that when we copy an employee, maybe we're thinking of like a big software program and to make a new employee, we might want to copy a different one, but we can't duplicate like the name or maybe the social security number or ID or something. Uh, but we'd want to like copy over the department and their manager and different things like that. So in this case, let's just program in the idea that when we copy an employee, it's going to be to make a new employee. We don't want to copy the name because they'll have a different name, but they might have the same title and the same supervisor. So at this point, I can implement just what I want to copy over. We can ignore the full name part and we'll just copy over job title is other dot m job title. M pointer supervisor is other dot m pointer supervisor. So it just copies over those two fields, or we could add some special logic in there, or anything else. Like, it's up to us how we want to design this. So we'll keep this as is, run this again. So here we can see that it copied over the employee title and the boss, but not the name. So we'd still have to go in and set up something like underling two dot set name. and then have that all working like that. 
So that's really all there is to the copy constructor. There's not much more than that. Again, it's up to design. You could copy some of the member variables or modify a member variable. So for instance, maybe if this is a job title, maybe we'll add two to the end. So when it's copied over, we have employee two, or we could iterate on that or something. Maybe that's where we could have a static integer to count how many employees there are and then append that to the end of the job title. So we know, you know, you probably don't want to have people with completely unique job titles, but that could be an option or anything else. Again, it's a design issue, so.